that I'm going to talk about. We've got some demonstration going on here today. Um, and if you have any questions, and you know, just stop, ask right away. The uh, two resource books that I use a lot, this one here, Ground Gardening, and it's in your, you put that information in your flyer. And the other one, this is the Four Seeds of Harvest. I've been reading this one since 2000. My sister and I bought a little farm in 2000. We didn't know a whole lot about gardening. So we signed right up right away to the acorn group and we started going to conferences and talking to farmers and bugging them and finding what we needed to do. And it was fairly complicated because when you have a hay field, you think you've got it all. Just go out and plant. Well, hay fields, they don't want to grow vegetables, they want to grow hay and wheat. So it took us a long time to learn about plowing and chisel plowing and and uh, green manure crops and soil testing and all of that. So, uh, and we're still learning. I don't have a computer in front of me to look and see. What <laughs> I'm missing something it's a little, here. The white thing. This? <laughs> and the arrow forward. <laughs> it takes. My foot, which means I got to kind of turn around and look because I, I was looking for my prompt, right? Well, I'll push the button and see what happens. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's what you said, Edie. You were going to end up with a turn around. Yeah. I'll yeah. put my glasses on. All right. Zoom, volume, page. <laughs> it worked at the office. <laughs> Then we had our composting workshop, and that was all about uh, 
all alone. Okay. Now our growing season is we are in a zone B up to a five, depending on where you live. And our growing season is May 22nd to about September 22nd. That's the frost free. Now you have growing season beyond that. That's when you have to worry about the frost. So our outgrowing season, outdoor growing season is about four months. We have approximately 17 to 20 weeks for 120 to 140 days. And that's important for you to know. So we put it on the top of your take home so that when you're feeding your plant seeds and when you're calculating when to start your plants in the spring, then all of that has to be factored in so that you get everything harvested. You know, I started Brussels sprouts, sprouts too late, and then had them get snowed under when they were just starting to get beautiful little bulbs on them. You know, and you learn those things. Some things just have to be started early in the season in order for you to get them out and get them in the garden and get them to produce for them. Now, in your uh, flyer, your little handout, you all have one. We're going to go through the chart that's on there. It's really, really important that you, if you want to get your things up earlier in the year, that you do your preparation in the fall. The more you prepare your garden and clean out everything and have it all set up, the earlier you can get into it into the spring. And it just makes sense. You're going to see why that especially applies when you want to start putting these different extenders into your garden. I walked out to my garden yesterday and the ground was still quite frozen and it would be really quite hard to even to draw stakes in there. So if you had those stakes in last fall, they'd already be in place. So the little things we're going to talk about as we move through. So fall preparation, really, really important. The little picture that we saw uh, before this one too on the seasonal, the slide before. We had some people uh, that hadn't seen the broad fork before. Did you notice the lady that was standing on the fork that was in the garden and she had her foot on? Can you go back one then or do you dare to try that? Um, no, no, keep, keep going. I saw her. Broccoli, cabbage, kale, mustard, and green onions. 
So those are your early, early crops. If you haven't started them and you want to start them, you can start them now. You still have time, you know, don't give up, start them. Um, they might not get as big, but, you know, go for it. It's still spring, it's still April. March the 1st to 15th, somewhere around there, you can start your tomatoes, peppers, lettuce, your herbs, parsley, some of your um, Asian vegetables, early broccoli. When you're picking your broccoli, it's nice to pick a variety of early, of mid and late broccoli when you're starting all three. So you have broccoli for a longer season as well. There's those Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and how do you pronounce that? Kurabi? Kurabi. So again, if you haven't got your tomatoes started, start them now. Get your tomatoes. Uh, Buzz Harvey, he plants his tomatoes, he starts his tomatoes right up to the end of May. And he has all kinds of production laid into the fall. I mean, he runs his vegetable stand right up until November. In early April, or we're going to say mid-April, because April's really late coming this year, the gardens are still, I have gardens still under snow, cucumbers and zucchini, now they grow really fast, so even if you started them a little bit later in April, close to the 1st of May, you'd be fine with those, because when you put them in, they come very, very quickly, and you can only hold them for three or four weeks before you have to plant them out. And in mid-May, you can start your second batch of cucumbers, so you can have two picking up cucumbers. And also, um, I start my corn and squash inside because I trick my corn. Corn likes to have a warm soil. So you have to wait to put your corn in if you're planting it outside. But if you start your corn inside, the little transport plants, you can put them out into a cool so soil and they don't mind at all. So I kind of trick my corn, and I grow corn, I'll, I'll start, you know, 10 corn, and then a week later I'll start 10 corn, and then I'll start 10 corn. So all through the summer I have a great corn harvest, and then when I'm planting up those little transplants, then I drop my seeds in so those will come later. So that way I have a long corn season, and I don't plant a whole lot, I mean, I'll just have little sections of corn for, for each one. I don't supply the community. Hmm? No, just it depends on what I like. You know, I, I like this, the peaches and cream, so I, I use the same type. I just plant so that it will grow. And you just have to remember that your corn, if you plant your corn too late, then it gets, takes a little longer growing season. It, I had one kind of point in time where I didn't have any corn because I had all my little transplants and then I was. The, the ones that I put in the uh, soil, it took them a lot longer to grow and mature. So then I had this little few weeks here where they didn't have any. So I'll fix that this year. I'll probably put my seeds in and then some of my transplants and then seeds and transplants. I'll do that. But you know what they say, every growing season you live and you say, okay, next year I'm going to do that. Uh, in mid-year, you can try broccoli and kale because now we're working towards extending the season and we're planting our seeds that we're going to harvest either late in the year or we're going to get those seeds and hold them over into the spring. And remember, if you already are lucky enough to have a whole thing, like this little one here in your yard, you can also start your little seedlings in your corn in your whole thing early in the season. So they can start outdoors. You know, plants love the outdoors. They love the trees and they, they do not get diseases quickly, they harden off better. Plants just like the outdoors. It's hard for the growing plants in the house because sometimes you get a little too much, you give you that burst of leaves, and the leaves are kind of soft, and, and uh, you just have too much nitrogen, and then you get bugs in there. And that's not good. And then they get really vulnerable. Sometimes they you know, kind of go like that. So it's hard to move growing things. Now, these little tomatoes, 
because there's nothing worse than a little tomato that's in there and those little roots are spinning all around. Because in nature, those roots don't spin around. When they go in your garden, they spread out like this. And so when you let them spin and spin and spin, and then you put them in the garden and say, okay, grow, well, and then you walk by them, they're all they're sitting there for like a month, and they're just sitting there, they don't doing anything. Well, they're together all dizzy. They have to get all untangled, and then they have to figure out where the little roots are. And if you don't give them the right little bit of fertilizer, um, they like to have, when you plant them out, you ask them to grow roots. So when you're asking them to grow roots, then you have to give them the one in the middle, right? You have to keep a little bit of potassium to grow roots. So you've got to feed them a little bit.
and then we're going to talk about cold frames, using your cold frame, and uh, in this particular <coughs> format, this is using your cold frame all winter to produce your, to hold your vegetables. You're really not producing that much because they don't grow during the winter. To hold your vegetables, early spring, I'm going to assume that your vegetables are all gone and cleaned out. So in February, early February, you can lift that lid, you can plant in your cool seeds, and you can have early, early lettuce and some things. And it also means that leaving this cold frame empty over the summer months, because now you're moving into your garden, and you don't need your cold frame. You're going to grow in the garden, you're going to give your cold frame a break, you're going to put your leaves and compost and let that have green manures in it for a couple months over the summer, because you're going to start it up again in August, planting that second transplant of leeks and all that you started a little bit later in the spring. Those are going to go into this so that it's going to grow in the fall. If we have a great growing season in the fall, you get good heat, the ground's warm, and it really can take off. You can get better in the fall than you can in the spring, because in the spring the soil's gone. So in the fall, you can get that great burst of growth and get your foods all ready to keep them for the next Sure. When do we do we seed in that in that cold frame, or do we put the plants in it okay. in the fall? Both, both, because you can seed your little lettuces and that in there. But if you're going to do your leeks and things, you want to start your leeks indoors, or you want to start them because they're cool temperature plants. They like a little cool. And what's it like the end of July? Right? You're cooking So it's better if you start your little plants, and that way when you put them out in here, they get a chance to kind of grow and develop their roots, and you can protect them a little bit in here. You're going to keep them really well watered until that season rolls over into September and then it cools off with them and they like it better and they want to grow better. Because you always have to remember is what's the characteristic of your seed? What would it feel like if you were bringing someone from a cold country to a warm country climate? So just keep that in mind. Your seeds are very temperature. You have to read it on the packages because they like specific things. So your cold crops are for the early, early spring and they're for your fall. And then your summer season seeds in between. All right, so we're going to talk about row covers. Row covers come in different weights and they're used for different things. This row cover that I've structured here in the back, this will be a medium weight. Now a lightweight is really, really good because the lightweight, it lets lots of sun in, it just stops the wind from going through. We have a light. And then I have a little box with my tools on. 
I'm ready to put these in the transplant, oh, the soil's warmed up, and it's also going to protect these little guys when I put them out into the, the soil. Okay, that's fine. Now your medium weight. Pin it in the ground all the way around. Or I can use a tent peg, 
they, and then they show up all over the place. So using a little curtain like this is great. I like them because they're small, they're easy to move around, and you can just put them straight out on the ground, pin them all down, and you don't have to worry about a uh, little arch thing underneath it if you're just putting it over your seats. But you have to keep checking it because if your little seats germinate, then you're going to want to take it off.
you can buy it, if you buy the little thicker, you can get two years out of it if you're careful. Are you getting it from the fabric store? Or from the no, store? I just got it from not a specific garden store. No, no. It, it was it was like eight feet long for ten dollars. It was really yeah. no big. So it doesn't matter what you use, it doesn't have to be cotton or no. 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 But I use this for everything too. I mean, this is a great um, shade. You know, I'm starting lettuces in here, and lettuce doesn't like it too hot and too sunny. So I'm going to grab my row cover and put over it, or, you know, I'm going to shade my little, uh, my, my poor little lettuces. You know, I'm going to give them a little house like that um, because, you know, they don't like it burning hot. Or if I'm starting my leeks in August, then they kind of like it shady too because they like cool. You put them out in August, they're not going to be happy. So you have to give them what they what they want. You have to give them a little bit of shade. So we're going to look at some other. Uh, so I need you guys to still hang out here. Oh, and I want to show you one other thing I use when I find things to see. I find this is just the best material. When you put your seeds in, like carrots are really, really hard to see because they don't like to get dried out. Uh, if you put your seeds in and then you just lay that over your row and then you just wet it and keep it wet, that keeps the moisture over. Always again, it keeps them a little bit dark and you can get really good ger uh, germination. And I also use this for a little shade cover, right? Because it's a little more it holes in it. I use that too. These are just great tools of the trade. A good bowl of this, you can use it multi-purpose. Keeps the bugs out. Use it for a variety of things. All right, let's look at the next, um, the next level of bigger is better. Can I just ask one more question? Yeah. Is the burlap and the, the white stuff are those fabrics, or are they garden store things? You were They're garden store. store. The They're all garden store.
if I put lettuce in here and then I take it out and I'm going to put uh, cabbage and broccoli in here, I'm going to want to put a couple of inches of compost on it before I plant the next one. I'm going to want to put uh, a little clover down around it so I can turn that clover in. If I have extra lettuce, I might just dance around and throw that all in there and then just turn that in because it will keep the weeds down and the seed is pretty cheap. It grows quick and it feeds the soil. So whenever you're growing in here, you continue to think, how am I going to feed the soil so that it's going to be ready for the next crop? So your whole garden has to be in that cycle. More questions? Who has to be hard Do you use just regular garbage bags instead of your back plastic? You can, sure. It's, it's exactly what you buy in this great big roll. Now this is, I think this is just a brilliant material. This is called Flexi Hose. And it is, um, it comes either in a 10 foot length or you can buy it in a roll. It's $17 for this roll and it's 50 feet. So if you're going to cut your hoops to the size you want, this is the cheapest way. $17 and you can cut your hoops 5 feet, 6 feet. Feet. Because if you have a 10 foot piece, you really can only get two 5 foot pieces out of it. So it's actually cheaper to buy a roll up. And what's great about this is not only can you cut it, because I'm sure you guys are not going to go and find that. I know that you can go in and can't, you can find this. I bought this at Kent yesterday because I thought I can't show you something unless I can tell you where to go and buy it and how to do it. So this is the very exact same thing. It is fairly uh, rigid. It'll, it'll take a fair amount of, of weight. It's easy again just to just snap up, take down. You can do everything with it. Uh, and it also comes with these little clamps. You can buy these. You can see they're different color because the clamps are for a different material, but they fit this even though these are yellow. So the guy at the store said, what does it go with that? And I said, yeah, I know, but it fits. That's all right. So you could even cut, like, um, you could cut this into two small ones, and then kind of with a bigger one, you could join them together and have make them do dual purposes. Okay? So you understand what I'm saying? You want to put them about every three feet, every two feet, Two feet or three feet apart. There's a question on how do you cut it? How do you cut it? Cut with a hacksaw. Okay. And these little clamps, even though these these particular ones are only like three-way clamps, you can get them in four-way. So the, the these tend to go back and forth. But if you put this in, if you put this uh, in you, uh, if you use this. You can put a little board along the top of that, and you can put little screws in it, and you can give it a little top ridge along the top. So, just a flat board, and that'll give it again a little bit more stability. Harder to take down and put it back together. But the beauty of, of doing it like this is you can pull them out and you can move them wherever you want at the drop of a hat. Very flexible. If you build a more permanent bin, then you could put the ridge in it and make them stronger, especially if you're going to put two layers or three layers or four layers on top of this. You can get a larger uh, weight. I'm not going to open this one as well. This is a uh, three-quarter. This is half inch. And this is three-quarter inch. And this three-quarter inch, this is $34 for 50 feet. And with this, now you're getting into something that you can leave longer in the season and also take some snow support because it's a lot bigger and it's a lot more sturdy. Okay? Um, we can flip that. We're going to convert this. Take this one down. And we're going to go bigger. All right. Next slide. Oh. Okay, is that it? 
other things than the row covers. So uh, you have things like this maybe in your home that you can use. We'll go to the next one because it's got the pictures on it. Here we go. When you set up your, uh, for your transplants, there are some great ideas of what you can put out. But also, you could put, fill this full of water, and you can put it in here too, because your water is going to hold the heat during the day, and it's also going to hold the heat during the evening inside of this. Those little tomato, uh, where, you, where you put the water in the wall, those are great too. The thing is, you have to remember to get them up earlier than the day you plant out your, your tomatoes because your soil it will warm your soil up. So, so put these out a week, two weeks before. Set them all in your garden, warm your soil up, and then put your transplants in. But what you have to be careful with is those tend to wait and close on the top. So you have to be, make sure that you can get them open, otherwise your little plants will suffocate in them. The thing, same thing with these. When you're making these and cutting the bottoms out of them and using them to cover your plants, these are good because they have a hole in the top. They can breathe, but it can get really, really warm in here. So gardening is kind of like having a little family. You have to be walking around and monitoring and taking care of things and keeping your eye on it on a day-to-day -day basis. Because otherwise your plants cook and then all your work is done. If you cook your little tomatoes after you brew them inside for eight weeks and then warmed everything up, it would be really sad. So that's, these are great tools. You don't have to have a lot of expensive stuff to garden. You can use what you have. You can go to the second hand use store. You can buy all these little curtains. You can make your own clips. You can do it very, very inexpensively if you want to. Okay, next one. Now we're getting into the mini hoop tunnels. Okay, this is the big guns, big guys. Mini hoop tunnels are a little bigger and they are very inexpensive. Again, we're looking at this flexible hose. That's the size that they have in the one in the picture. You can make them a little bit larger, which makes it easier to work in. And also, when you have a little larger one, if you're warming your soil, it gives you a little more heat space to heat up. Do you know that they tell you that the bigger the greenhouse and the higher the greenhouse you have, the better? That's why these commercial greenhouses have these great big domes in them, because you want that heat mass to heat the soil underneath. So, big greenhouses and that's why they have them. So a little bit bigger and uh, again very movable, very portable. See how you, they're, they're vented? You also could, uh, someone put screens on them to keep the bugs and stuff out, you know, if they want to, if you don't want certain uh, bugs flying into your cabbages and laying eggs. So. Um, there, I, you see how they have that nice flat surface for them too? If, once you start getting with them bigger, then you have to look at tying them into the ground. So, you put them in the ground, you're going to put them in your rebar and put them on the ground, but then that one's not going to fit. You need a smaller piece of rebar. Uh, you're going to drive that rebar in the ground, but also I would drill a hole through here and put a wire on it and tie it into the ground or stake it into the ground on certain intervals around here because you don't want everything flying. You're, if your wind gets underneath that, believe me, it will lift that and take it and it will go to the neighbor's yard. And so you don't want flyaway plastic and flyaway row covers. I've never had this one fly. I think it's just because it's sticking good in the ground and the way the boards on the material keep it grounded. But I check it real often because it will blow, parts of it will blow up when you go out in the garden after a big wind and you'll have to attach it back into the ground again. But once you get into building these bigger ones, higher, then you have to really attach them well. You know what works? Those little, uh, 
round twisty that you put in your lawn and you can put your dog on it. Those are wonderful. You put those in the four corners, twist them in, and then drill your little hole through here, put your cable and tie them to that. Great. Works wonderful. The little twisty thing. Because sometimes you even need rebar to pull out. Frank, that we built for a demonstration for you. And that just 
beautiful. This is one. This is one foot wide. So for every foot, your little frame should be two inches difference between the back and the front. So that's the ratio. So this is the perfect little demonstration side. You wouldn't want to use anything less than two inch lumber, and you want to use lumber that is not pressure treated, or you want to use a natural lumber. Hemlock's good. So you want this to be at least two inches thick when you're building it. On the top, I use plexiglass for the demonstration of it. But um, I think I have that information maybe on the other slide. Let's go on this one first. The idea behind a cold frame is to plant your winter crops in here around mid-August. And the theory is to get them well established and grown before it gets cold. Because your little lettuces and things, they don't mind being frozen. Your kale doesn't mind being frozen. Last fall, the kale froze, thawed, froze, thawed. I was picking kale the end of November. It was beautiful. And I didn't even put a row cover over it or a protector. It doesn't mind being frozen. Leeks don't mind being frozen. These little lettuces don't mind being frozen, but they do mind if you pick them when they're frozen. So you have to wait until the temperature of your box is mild enough in the winter that the tops are thawed and then that's when you go in and you harvest and then you cover it up. So it's like, uh, like storing your vegetables in a cold storage or storing them in your refrigerator. This is your winter refrigerator. Your vegetables are all grown, they're mature and you just go in and harvest them when you want so they're nice and fresh. They'll grow a little bit but you know at the beginning and the end. They'll start growing a little bit in the spring if you don't eat them all up. So our problem we have in New Brunswick is that we have long weeks of hard cold, really cold. Like when you get 25 below and it's so cold, that's when it's a challenge for your, your uh, things in here to survive. So you need to make sure you protect this as much as you can. If you put in insulation around here, that some styrofoam, that's good. If you put it up against a building wall, that's even better and give it some protection. If you have it in your garden, a nice sunny spot, then bury it in your garden until the dirt is up around here. But then, on the other part, you're still going to have to mulch it with hay and mulch it with leaves and make sure that it's all well tucked in there. And even in the deep, deep part of winter, you're going to have to put a sleeping bag or more plastic or whatever on the top of this. It's really, really hard to keep your vegetables all winter long in this season. It depends on where you live, even around the city of Fredericton, how mild in, in, at Green Village our soil is, uh, you know, thawed than it is in my home. I still have snow in my gardens. At Green Village, we don't. So in Fredericton, you're a little bit warmer here in Fredericton than farther away. At Round Grand Lake, it's cold down there to the end of May. Really cold. So you really have to be careful and you have to just try it. You just have to try it and see how that's going to work. You can put uh, heating coils in the bottom, then it's going to cost you money to heat this. You can put collecting, you know, water collectors in here to, so that the water will warm up. Um, you can do that. But the big thing you need to remember is that you need to keep it rich, the soil rich. You have to vent it to make sure because it's sealed all the way around and that's the secret between it it being a cold frame, and this doesn't work if you just put a piece of plastic over a lean-to. I tried that. For the last two winters I've tried just putting plastic on. The cold frame is better because it insulates it all the way around. Uh, right now I'm keeping my Swiss chard, my parsley, and my kale throughout the winter. I'm being successful with that, so I'm really happy. Um, but. I've not been eating them, I've been keeping them to test the soil spots and see what's the best place to start with the next level. So to start growing vegetables. What uh, do you mean? Sorry. No, go ahead. 
By venting, you mean you just open it once in a while? Yeah, you have to have a... When like the load, we don't vent. No, no. Your venting is in the fall. So if I'm going to plant my things in here in August, because I want to get them started, then it's pretty hot. So you're probably going to have this open all the time, like this. And then you're going to have to put a screen over to keep the critters from coming in and eating everything as it grows or the little bunny rabbits or whatever. So you're going to have to put something over here to, to protect it and keep it watered. Uh, so you're just growing things. Then late October, it's going to be cold at night. You're going to close it. You're going to vent it in the daytime and make sure that it gets lots of, uh, you know, air. But then, once it turns cold, then you close it. You just have to you put a little thermometer there, watch the, the weather. You know, if it gets really hot and sunny, you have to keep the snow off these too. You can't just let the snow bury them for the winter. You have to keep them cleaned off so that they get the light. And if they heat up in the winter, if you get a really hot day and you have a real sheltered spot, then yeah, you're going to crack it and give it a little bit of air. They do have monitors with little uh, levers that can pop them up. But again, you know, we're talking backyard use here. Okay. What's the next one to say? When you're putting this in, uh, setting it up, it's a good idea to put the weed barrier in the bottom of it so that your weeds don't grow up. The first greenhouse that I built, I put it on the lawn because I thought the lawn's perfect, it's all mowed and it's beautiful, so I built this great big 20 by 40 greenhouse, it was huge, and it was permanent, and then I built raised beds in it, and filled them all with the tractor, and then the grass all came up from underneath, even though there was a lot of dirt in those beds. I should have put something down over the lawn, cardboard, anything to kill the grass before I built the beds. And so then it just became a constant fight every year of that grass coming up early in the spring and trying to take over those beds. So make sure that we're, whenever you start this, or this is going to be permanent, make sure that you, you know, you start fresh and don't let the weeds get up in there. So a lot of this I've already covered. We need good drainage. Uh, you need lots and lots of insulation, especially in New Brunswick where we live. We don't have the benefits that they do on, on the coast. This book that I was showing you that um, I really love, she's in a, or Nikki, she's in a five zone. So she's, she's really a zone warmer than us. And she's very successful. And she showed you with her uh, cold frames in the winter, venting them and, and picking from them. Now, she does a variety of, of winter Gardening. She gardens in, in these, and she also gardens in these. She puts all of her kale and leeks and everything, and she does what she calls a closed hoop. So she grows everything until the end of the season. She puts on her, uh, she puts her row cover over it. She puts her plastic over it, and then she twist ties it and she shuts this down. And it stays like that until she's ready to harvest. When she needs the food out of it, then she comes along and she harvests out of the side of her hoops. And she, uh, so it's all closed and she leaves it closed until she's ready to harvest in the wintertime in the snow. She also harvests out of this box. She uses that for her taller plants because you don't have a lot of room in your box to grow the leaves and the kale and the taller plants. So for this one, you're going to want to grow your lettuces and things. It's the same with your carrots. If you want to eat a quantity of carrots, then your carrots are going to last, or you can grow more if you grow them in your garden. And so remember, to get your carrots to stay, you're going to start your carrots later in the season, right? You're not going to start planting your carrots in uh, May or June, and then have those do you all winter. You're going to plant your winter carrots later in the midsummer. And then those are going to grow in the garden. And then when you're ready to cover them over in the late fall, you're going to put two feet of leaves or straw on them. And then you're going to put your row cover over the top of that. And if you want, you put a piece of plastic over the top.
top of that again. So when you're ready to harvest your carrots, then you have to come out and dig. And that's without these things here. You don't need those things over your carrots. Your carrots and beets, parsnips, can all stay right in the ground, but you need to protect them. Because once that frost comes in, it gets into the root of them, then they rot. They won't keep. And your beets as well. And I've had some success with beets and carrots in, you know, again, with experimenting and covering them and trying to keep them through the season. If you keep your plants all winter till spring, the thing is, is they're just going to grow up and then bloom into seed. They're going to want to go to seed. So eat them. Eat them all winter. Don't keep them till spring. Eat them all. Don't have anything till, you know, in January. Eat them all. Okay. The, cut, the top of your uh, box is, is really important. The first year I tried glass, you know, like big sheets of windows and, and they broke and then you had glass all in your food and that wasn't very fun. Uh, but Nikki uses a product called this polycarbonate. And polycarbonate is, you can get it from Halifax C. It's $55 for a three by six sheet of it. They cut it to size. And you put it on your box and you put a frame around it. Now the polycarbonate is like this piece of greenhouse. This is a rigid that you put on your greenhouses. In that it, it's two pieces with kind of a cardboard thing in, in between. So it has insulation in it. So, the polycarbonate is going to keep more heat in than this thing of plexiglass or than your piece of glass that you put on there. And the polycarbonate is very resistant to kids jumping on it and dogs running over it. And, and uh, so it's really a durable top cover and it's safe. So I think, you know what, for $55, but for a 3 by 6 cold frame, it's worth the investment to order it and make sure that your top is of really good quality. Are you down? Uh, Halifax C. Yeah, Halifax C. So this is showing uh, using the straw bale method, and this is uh, keeping your vegetables over winter, using the straw bales, making a little circle around them. Again, your vegetables are all grown, they're mature, they're tall, they're ready to keep them through the winter. And she's using the, the polycarbonate window, the same one that she uses for these boxes. And she's covering the top of it, sweeping the snow off of it in the winter so a little bit of light gets through. And then harvesting them, making sure that they're watered. And then, now after it gets cold, you don't water these anymore. So, you don't water them all winter. You don't worry about that. You just bring them through the fall, because the fall's dry. You know, we're coming, the soil's warm, and you have to make sure that your plants have, they, they don't get too dried out. But then you don't water at all. Okay. All right. This is uh, my garden. And the picture on the left was 15th of April, March. And this is a garage frame. You know, you see them, like, you see them all over the country. People use them and then they just leave them in your yard. So there's tons, there's tons of them around. So I nap one of these for free. I set it up in my little, this is my little small garden. And it shows you, so I dug all that snow out. And I trenched it all around and I put my plastic on the 15th of March. And I'll be ready to plant inside this weekend. So I'll be ready now to plant all my little seeds. And the snow was like that deep inside. I was actually pulling the plastic over the top, standing on top of the snow, with my hands up through the frame. And normally I have to have a step ladder when I'm putting that plastic on. The uh, fall garden, you see my fall garden, how it's all covered with straw. And it's nice, it's put to bed. The beds are all prepared, they're fertilized, they're ready for spring. So all I have to do is take the pitchfork and go out and just scratch them around a little bit and then I'm all ready to put my row covers over and I'm all ready to warm up the soil. I have three raised beds because that garden is wet. So I have three raised beds for early 
and in my other garden, not worried about that, that will come along. When it starts getting really bare, then I'll put some buckwheat or something in there and, and turn it in. You can't plant your whole garden and eat the whole thing at one time. So you have to think about your garden stages. Well, I'm going to plant this much lettuce here, and I'm going to plant this much beans here, and then in two weeks I'm going to plant this much beans, and then, you know, in another two weeks I'm going to plant this much. So you have to think in smaller components more often. So the planting season is all summer. It's not just now or the end of May. You just don't go and plant your whole garden unless you're feeding, I don't know, if you have a family of ten, I guess, maybe. But just plant little rows of beets, little rows of carrots, so that you have your vegetables all summer. But you have to make sure that your soil is protected. If you work so hard and you get that compost in there and you get that nutrition all in there and you leave that soil bare, it's all going to evaporate. When the, with the hot sun, and it's going to run off with the rain, and you're going to lose all your nutrition that you've worked so hard. So keep it covered, keep that soil nutrition in there. Okay. And uh, this again is the larger garden, and there's the famous row cover going down the middle of it with uh, this, this one right here with all of those black hoops. And that was uh, spring planting, putting everything out in the garden of all the little seedlings. And those are the herbs being protected from the critters that seem to come around and eat those. And then I think that's a duplicate picture of the one that we saw earlier. Does, does the fabric shed water or will it moisture will go through? The moisture will go through. It will resist. Kind of, um, well, it is, yeah, because it's not pulled tight on the ends. It should be tight. It should, it should be tight. When you the water crop, the yeah, the wind and everything blows it and it, it does get like that. So I made this out of curtains. So this this was my first uh, row cover before I got really fancy and, and bought row covers. And I thought that longer would be better, so I made it uh, 100 feet long. And then you'll see me trying to take this over the garden and then get it all stretched out. And then the lumber, the amount of lumber that I need to haul over in the garden to tie that down. But, so smaller would be better, you know, like, probably 20 feet with the plant. It, it, but it, it's it a learning like a experience. Hmm? It looks like a giant caterpillar. It looks like a caterpillar. And actually, when they go look at these very big greenhouses like this, they call them caterpillars. Because they actually, they throw ropes over them to hold them down, and then they put those little curly twist things in the ground to hold that down, because that's a pretty high structure, and you don't want that structure moving away. Now, the other thing I wanted to tell you about extending your garden, to me, extend, extending means I want to eat greens and I want to eat fresh things a little early in the season. So I just, I brought some sprouts to show you. Uh, these are peas, and you can take your little peas and you can sprinkle them in a box like that and just keep them wet and you don't even need soil on them. And those will all grow up into the most delicious pea sprouts. And you just cut them with the scissors and throw them in your salad. Absolutely beautiful. They grow on a windowsill. They don't care if they have that much light because that little round pea seed is chock full of vitamins and nutrition to push it and make that plant. So really, really easy to grow and you can have your fresh peas in about 10 days just by doing that, growing them in your window, cutting them off, putting them in your salad. These are fennel seeds, three days all sprouted like that. You want to come up and taste them? They're lovely. These are lentils, sweet, sweet lentils sprouted. You throw those in your cask, in your chopped cabbage, put that in your salad with some sunflower seeds. They're lovely and sweet, and they have all the nutrition in them because now they're trying to grow and make a plant, so they're pushing that nutrition right out into the seed. So when you eat that, that's full of all of your um, wonderful enzymes, it's a live food. Food doesn't get any better when it's live and it's growing. When you have your fresh food, when you go to the vegetable store, you're buying your fresh food, your lettuce or whatever. They've been trucked for a while. They're not particularly live. They, they are fresh, but they're not live. This is a live food, most nutritional food you can get. And this is a live food, most nutritional food you can get. So when we do our cooking classes, we'll be doing some sprout workshops. We'll tell you more. 
about how to make sprouts and how to use them. So no problem with having lots of fresh greens. You can have them in three to ten days, just like that.